Thank you very much for the introduction. I'm Sarah Anku, and I'm from Ghana, Africa. So far, the discussion has skewed a bit towards Asia. Let me see whether I can draw your attention and interest to Africa. Ghana, next, okay. So my topic is on uh, enforcement of IPRs in Africa, particularly in relation to the first to file and first to use systems. The lawyers amongst you, I believe, have a fair idea of what I'm going to talk about. But the non-lawyers, I'll try to bring it down for us to all appreciate the situation in Africa and why we may need to uh, focus on Africa where I, our IPRs are concerned why we need to protect our IPRs in Africa. Yes, this is Ghana. We, are, we can be found in West Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, bordered by Togo, Burkina Faso, and La Côte d'Ivoire. We have the Gulf of Guinea to the south. We are a population of about 30 million people. Um, we are a stable uh, country economically. And uh, in terms of uh, politics, we have a very stable democratic um, climate. Uh, we are number one in West Africa and number five in the world. We um, invite investors, and so we have a good, very, um, our ease of doing business is quite remarkable. We have a good educated workforce. I can go on and on why you should um, invest in, in Ghana. Of course, we are the center of the world as well. The latitude zero and longitude zero cross our waters. So we are the center of the world. So that is a topic for another day, why you should invest in, in Ghana. Now, this is the procedure, my, the format my um, discussion is going to follow. Um, Africa, I am sure quite a number of you have heard about the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. It's going to open Africa to the world, our market of about 1.2 billion people to the world. And this number has acquired a significant number of uh, uh, middle class with demands for goods and services. And uh, that creates a lucrative opportunity for investors to enter Africa. Now, if you choose to enter Africa, I believe as a business person or an investor, you may want to, seek, to secure your IPRs. So what goes on in uh, Africa? We have the two systems for um, trademarks. When it comes to patents, of course, we all follow, each country follows the first to file system and not the first to invent, so you won't have any issues there. But when it comes to trademarks, we have the first to file and then the first to use systems um, or concurrently in the various uh, jurisdictions. So you may have to look at the laws in each country to see how best to strategize. Now, with the first to use um, jurisdictions, it depends on how much reputation your trademark has built over the period. And based on that reputation, through use, you acquire the rights to defend your mark from infringers. When it comes to first to file, the right goes to the, the entity or the person who first files the trademark. So assuming you have a trademark that you have used on the market for a very long period, and then someone else comes up to register first. What do you do? Create challenges. Briefly, let me go over what the kind of uh, systems we have and trademark systems we have in Africa. We actually have two main um, organizations, regional organizations. We have the OAPI, which uh, comprises 17 Francophone African countries. And then we have the ARIPO. 
The difference between OAP and ARIPO is that with the OAP 17 member states, when you apply for uh, protection for your IPRs and it is granted, you have rights in all 17 member states. But when it comes to ARIPO, which has 19 member states, each member state will decide whether to grant you the rights or not. So it doesn't follow the unitary system. So we have here, the pink depicts the OAPI countries, and then the orange depicts the um, ARIPO member states. You notice that the green, Nigeria and South Africa, the giants on the continent do not belong to any of the uh, bodies, but they are observer states for ARIPO. And then the remaining countries, if you have to register your IPRs, you will have to do that individually in those countries. Now, for the first to file countries, you have countries like Angola, Nigeria, Ghana, and then you have also OAPI, but OAPI has a caveat that that first to file should be such that it is done in good faith, not in bad faith. You should know that you have a right to it and that nobody else is using the mark on the market. Whilst the first to use, you have Tanzania, Ethiopia, Uganda, Burundi, yes, Rwanda, yes. And um, with the first to create countries, it will also be in your interest to register all the same because when there is any litigation, you will have to prove that your mark has acquired a reputation and you may want to avoid that. Why am I going through all this? I want to focus on the challenges in the first to file systems. You have a first, you have somebody or you have an entity that has a trademark that has been using over the years only for someone else to register. What are the challenges in this? You know that when you want to enforce your IPRs, a lot depends on you owning the right. You cannot enforce a right that does not belong to you. So the rights depends on each municipal law. So you have to go to each country. In the first file countries, the emphasis is on the registration. In other jurisdictions, developed jurisdictions, you may have other laws that you can follow even if you have not registered your mark. But in Africa, some of the countries will insist on the trademark law. So if you don't have that registration done, then you are left bare and you, you, you can't really enforce your rights. And that weakens your rights. It weakens your trademarks in such jurisdictions. Now, you could have other laws in other jurisdictions. For instance, in Ghana, you have the competition laws, um, unfair competition laws that you can say you can fall on using the thought of passing off and all that. But then you would have to go through lengthy and very costly litigation to, um, to enforce your rights. In Ghana, again, we have established a commercial court solely for business uh, disputes. So IPR disputes are usually um, um, litigated through the commercial courts and that is a bit more speedy, but then it is more expensive. So you may want to avoid that. Now, I keep asking this question. What if you are, regist you are using a mark on the market and then a third party goes to register? In the first to file system, you are virtually unable to do much about that. I will bring that up in a case study that I would share with you. It's quite recent. But apart from that, we have other cases too. If you see this case that I have just projected, which is a Ghanaian case of Aremu versus Lilaram Towards is a 1964 case. 
the holding you can see from the back. So let me just read it for you. It says that a person is only entitled to have absolute and exclusive right to the use of a trademark if a certification of registration in respect of the trademark has been issued to him. So it's not just about um, putting in an application. The courts will insist on you having a certificate. So if the courts can be that stringent, then it creates a bit of a challenge. Apart from that, if you take the Ghana Law Trademark Act as it is, Section 9 talks about the rights conferred by trademarks registration. And uh, subsection 2 says that the registered owner may institute court action against any person who infringes on the registered trademark, and it goes on and on. It means that you must be a registered tr trademark owner to be able to enforce your rights. Let me get down to the case study that I have for you. This is Hunter and Sons and Remy. If we are going to do trading as Remy Food Ventures, these are two Ghanaian businesses. I'll give you another one involving a New York, um, a U.S. company, and then a Ghanaian company. Now, these two local companies trade in spices on the same market, Kumasi, the second largest city in Africa. Sorry, in Ghana. The plaintiff trades in the trademark Minazin. The defendant, the first defendant trades in trademark Remy, all in the spices industry. The plaintiff started trading in this Minazin product in 2004. In 2017, she decided to register the mark. She went to the second defendant only to realize that the first defendant had put in an application in the year 2017. So that's 13 years on. So what this first defendant did is that in Ghana, when you apply for trademark registration, you are given uh, an acknowledgement letter. So with that acknowledgement letter, she actually went to the police to stop the plaintiff from trading in the trademark Minatin. So the plaintiff decided to go to court to sue the first defendant to stop the, restrain the first defendant from harassing her on the market. And what did the first defendant do? She put in an application for injunction to injunct the plaintiff from using the word mark Minazin. One would say, oh, this is so ridiculous. Who will grant such an injunction? It was granted. It was granted. And this reputation built over 13 years is now just going down the drain. What is happening is that we are before the Court of Appeal, and I know the Court of Appeal is likely to reverse that kind of injunction. What did the judge say? The judge insisted that both parties had put in application and no, none of the parties had any rights to the trademark. What he said was that what is apparent is that none of the parties has an exclusive right to the use of the Minazen trademark, as the applications of both parties are yet to be determined by the Registrar General's Department. And the Registrar General's Department is the second defendant in this case. He goes on to say that so long as the registration of the Minazen trademark is still pending, the applicant has no legal right which ought to be protected, likewise the respondent. He says, on the balance of convenience, it will be just to allow the plaintiff respondent, whether by itself or its servants, to market, distribute, and sell minazin packaged spices, which is already in stock, subject to the necessary approval from the Food and Drugs Authority. He limited what the plaintiff could do to only selling products that were in stock. What about the products in transit? What about products on the uh, production line? Meanwhile, the defendant in her defense had stated that she does not trade 
in spices called minazin, except that she has registered it. It may sound a bit ridiculous. He concluded by saying that both the applicant and the respondent are, however, restrained forthwith from using the minazin trademark to package their products and subsequently marketing, distributing, and selling same. What did he do? He injuncted the plaintiff. A trademark that had acquired all that reputation and value over 13 years was just going down the drain. The second case being uh, National Biscuits Company versus uh, Pobisco. Pobisco is a local biscuit company. He wanted to register the mark Pobisco with the um, register, the Register of Trademarks. And Nabisco, that's a national um, biscuit company from the US, decided to oppose the registration. It went to court. And the court held that the fact that Nabisco is well known in other jurisdictions matters not in Ghana because Nabisco was not well known in Ghana. I'm bringing all this up for you to just reflect on. For now, you may not be in Africa, you may not be in Ghana. But you may, with this expansion of our markets, opening up of our markets to the whole world, you may be interested. And if you are interested, you may want to consider seeking protection in Africa. Because if you don't do that, then you will expose yourself to some of these decisions from the court. And as Oliver Wendell Holmes said, more or less the law will lie in the bosom of the judge and you don't want to fall victim to that. So Anku and Anku, so more or less uh, we are recommending the registration of your IPRs and then of course in our jurisdiction you need to use um, a local uh, practitioner to enforce your rights and to register your rights. So my firm, Anku and Anku, can do all that for you. We, are, um, we have a network of other lawyers from other African countries, so you can enter Africa through us. Um, thank you. We, we, we provide the services, uh, the trademark registration services, patent services, industrial designs, copyright, and of course, in opposition as well, in the process of registering your trademarks, there's a stage for opposition. If there's a, any opposition, we can step in there for you. And then we also have, um, we also uh, represent our clients in ADR. We also represent them in litigation. As much as possible, we try to avoid lit litigation because of the sensitive nature of IPRs. You may not want information to be made public as we heard from our previous uh, panel discussion. So as much as possible, we encourage that. And we do represent our clients in same. And when it comes to litigation, of course, we harness our, our lawyers together and uh, we do all that for them. In short, Africa is predominantly an IPR consuming continent. So it will always be in your interest to seek protection in such an environment. And with a free trade agreement opening up the market to 1.2 billion people, you may wish to consider looking at Africa. I hope I have drawn your attention to Africa and whipped up your interest a bit, at least, in Africa. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sarah. So, like audience, we are, you know, here with the questions. Anyone? Uh, I think uh, OP, OAPI is a member of Madrid Protocol. So, if somebody follows the Madrid Protocol, the registration is already 
uh, can be recognized, right? That, that is so, and Aripo as well. Okay. And most of our African countries are also part of Madrid. The okay. only challenge is that if you take, let me speak for Ghana. In Ghana, there's so much backlog in the okay. trademark system, registration system. And under Madrid, you know we have 18 months within which to approve. So what happens is that your trademark gets approved without going through the necessary stages, which involves the publication, opposition, and all that. So what, in effect, you get from the Madrid system is a, a slightly weaker registration, slightly weaker trademark, because if I'm on the other side and there's a dispute between a Madrid application and a local application, I would bring all these up that the Madrid application did not go through the necessary procedure. It was never tested. So even though you have a trademark, it can be a bit weak. Thank you.